Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm going to look at integrating using partial fractions. This video today is building on a whole series of integration videos that I've covered so far. So you can check out my playlist and watch basic integration, reverse chain rule, integrating logs and also partial fractions. You're going to need to be able to do all of those topics before you can do the video today. So this topic today is bringing all of those things together, so make sure you've done lots of practicing first. I'm going to cover four exam style questions, um, and the last one is particularly challenging that I made up, so it's, it's very hard. <laughs> As ever, please do grab a pen and paper, pause the video and work at your own pace. I hope this is helpful. Let's get started. Okay, so here's our first question. So um, we're going to attempt to integrate functions that look like this when you've got um, complex fractions and that looks like it can be split up. So we're going to use partial fractions before we integrate it. So before we integrate we're going to take this to the side and we're going to split it up. Hopefully you can do your partial fractions, so do pause the video and have a go at doing this yourself. I went through that pretty quickly, so do check out my other video on partial fractions if you need to brush up on that. So now what we've done is we've expressed, well we found out A and B, so we can put them back. So now instead of integrating that function as it stands in purple, we can integrate it as the um, split up partial fractions. So I'm just going to write out the integral with those partial fractions, with minus 3 like that. Um, of course we're integrating the whole thing so it does need to go in brackets with the dx. We're staying here with an indefinite integration so no limits here today. And um, now hopefully you can see because these are more simple fractions here, these are just straightforward log um, integrals. So that first one would be log of x minus 1 in modular signs. And log of 3x plus 2, with the minus sign still there. The 3 on the top of that fraction can stay at the front there, um, but using the um, reverse chain rule on this, we would need to divide by the derivative of this function. So we'd need to divide by 3. So actually that 3 divided by 3 at the front will just vanish, it cancels out. So that is that. And because it's indefinite, we must remember the plus c. So hopefully that's clear and shows you that um, the only way to integrate this is to split it up and then you can use logs to do it. Okay, this next question, um, just looking at this, it looks horrific, doesn't it? So if you didn't know we were doing a video on partial fractions integration, just to um, think through how you might integrate that, Obviously we've done a few ways of integrating now, so you can run through the kind of checklist of how you can integrate something, um, and that doesn't really fit any of them, but looking at what you can do, that bottom can factorise, so it's worth trying that. So factorising that, putting it into double brackets any way that you're comfortable with, you can see that it looks like that. And now that hopefully starts to look more like a partial fractions question. So we can try splitting that up. Same as last question, but this time I've just added some limits here, so we'll try a definite integration. Do you have a go at that. Okay, so partial fractions, here we go. Just to say, I'm choosing values of x to force things to be zero, because that um, I find that easier. That is a horrible fraction, and I did just pop that into the calculator to get the 11 over 2. <laughs> okay, so putting that back into the original question, I'm going to rewrite this using the partial fractions. Do 
using square brackets this time because it's definite and I'm using limits. So here we've got a minus. Again, it's reverse chain rule. So it is a log, but we need to divide by the um, derivative of the inner function. So that would be 2. So that can go up the front there, minus a half. And then the next one is straightforward because the derivative of the middle function is just 1. So that can stay. And the 2 will sit at the front there. Okay, when you put these limits in, um, sometimes an exam question will ask you for an exact form as the answer. So if you just chuck that all into your calculator and get a numerical answer, that might not be quite what they're looking for. You can use it as a check, of course, but um, it might be worth breaking it up a little just to write it in exact form. So we'll start with 5 in here. We'll give us log of 13. I'm putting the 5 into here, 5 minus 4 is 1. Log of 1, I hope you know, is 0, so that would just cancel out that bit. So that's a 0. Um, and then we'll take away, just keep that in a square bracket for now, the second limit. So putting it in here, uh, 2 times 3 plus 3, so it's like 9. That's a half log of 9. And then 3 minus 4 would give us minus 1. We are applying a modulus to it, so that would become log of positive 1. Um, so log of 1 again is 0, so that would vanish again. Love it when that happens. So we've got, we can tidy this up just a smidge. We've got minus a half ln of 13 plus, and then that log of 9, we could bring that half up to be a power, so log of 9 to the power of a half. And 9 to the power of a half is root 9, which is 3. So you can simplify that a little bit more. Great, and we don't need a plus C because we've put limits in, and that is that. Okay, next question. I'm afraid that red pen has given my board a bit of a pink glow, but makes it more fun, I guess. Right, hopefully you can see again that this looks like something we can split up. So we'll do that with partial fractions once more. Okay, this one's a little bit more complicated because it's got that factor. So I hope you remember from your partial fractions that you need a factor of that 3x minus 1, but then you also need to include the factor when it's squared. So we'll have three different elements to this one. run out of things to make stuff zeros or just pick another number I'll just go with one okay so that's the partial fractions bit done I'm gonna have to clear the board to give me some more space Okay, so we integrate like before. Now this last one isn't a log. <laughs> so just to throw that surprise at you, um, be aware of that one because there's a power on the bottom. This is a reverse chain rule. So might help you to write the um, power at the top. So we've got 3x minus 1 to the power of negative 2, so we're integrating that, so we need to raise the power by 1 and then divide by the derivative of the inner, which is 3. Again, happily that cancels the 3 at the front out, so that just vanishes. And that's the final answer. You can write that back down at the bottom, so 1 over 3x minus 1 if you want to. And again, we've got a plus c because there's no limits. So do watch out for that, that's a bit sneaky. Well done if you got that right. Okay, last question, and this is an absolute beast that I made up for you, you're welcome. So, it's another partial fractions question, but can you spot what's harder about this one? Just before we begin this one, you're unlikely to get one this hard, but you know, if you can manage this, you can manage anything. So let's try. 
So the bottom, if you expand that out, then the highest power of x would be cubed. Notice that we've got an x cubed on the top, so we don't have a smaller numerator than denominator, they're the same. And what that suggests is you can pull out a number before the partial fraction, so there's going to be a whole number to start with. Again, this is in my partial fractions video, so um, just be aware of that and practice that. And I showed you a little trick how to pull out the number at the front, I'll show you now. So what I mean is if we expand this uh, denominator out, then we could get a multiple of that on the top. So that's what we're looking for. First of all, let's expand that denominator. If we expand out double brackets, x minus 1 times x minus 1, first of all, then we'll get that, and then we can expand by the x. And then what we want to do is write the numerator in terms of that. So we're going to write that first. And uh, we want um, a number of these with other things. x cubed and x cubed, it will only be one of them. If there was a 2 in front, then you could do two lots of all of it, but it's not. So just one. So one lot of all of that. We'll just write that out again. So we're going to have one lot of that, but then we need to adjust. We've got x cubed, which agrees, that's great, but we don't have minus 2x squared. What we want is plus 1x squared, so we need to plus another 3x squared to make that right. Um, we don't have x, we've actually got minus 4x, so we need to take off another 5x. And we also need a plus 1. So can you see... I've written that in terms of that um, denominator, but then if you collect all this together, it does agree with the left-hand side. So just to make that even clearer, I'm just going to write the denominator on both sides. So that top is the same as that, so that all will cancel out to just be 1. So if we're integrating all this, then we can rewrite that as the integral of 1 plus all that jazz there. So we are integrating 1 plus this stuff. And that's the stuff that we can now split into partial fractions. Okay, so we're now just going to take this bit here and split it into partial fractions. And just be aware, this is another one where you've got that factor repeated, kind of one with a squared, one not. So let's try that now. Okay, so now we can write the integral with all that simplified. And hopefully we can now integrate that. That last one, just beware, it's not a log because it's got a power on the denominator. So you need to do a reverse chain rule, have a go. and plus c because it's indefinite. Well, very well done, that really was the beast. <laughs> so well done if you managed to follow it, um, extremely well done if you managed to do it yourself. It might be worth um, rewinding and replaying that one and trying it again. Um, it is really, really complicated, but uh, it, all the different stages and different parts of that process are worth practicing, so it's good 
to bring that all together. Well, very well done. I hope that was helpful. Keep practicing and enjoy. Thank you for watching.